Okay, let's see if we are live. How is everybody tonight? It's uh, Friday, April 3rd. It is 7 p.m. here in Las Vegas. I'm going to start the live stream for Amazon. I already started the live stream for YouTube. Just give me a second here as I get Amazon going. And we should be live in about one second on Amazon Live. How is everybody doing tonight? Let's wait till we get people into the studio or into the live stream. I like to say studio, but we are all at home right now and we should stay at home right now as while well, things are going crazy in the world. We're going to do this for about an hour tonight, maybe more, depending on how things go. Last week we did a live stream and it was uh, very good, very successful in terms of all the viewers we got, I got close to almost 100 people at one point, uh, 5,000 people, more than 5,000 people viewed it. So looking good on the live stream. Hopefully tonight we can have another good one. I have two really good devices we're going to look at tonight, of course. Um, let's take a look at some of the people in the live stream. Tell me if you can hear me and see me okay. What's up, David G? David Daniel Wang. XPS is better unless you need Mac OS. Um well, we'll find out. Uh, I think you guys know what my feeling uh, feeling is on that. Uh, Tan Lay, hi, how are you? Uh, we got 12 of you so far. Uh, can you hear me and see me okay? In the live stream, and let me just make sure I got the... And Richard, how are you? Hello. Good to see William. How are you? Regular. Merchant man, how are you? Hope you're making some money even during these hard times, merchant man. Uh, let's see, we got Tech Realm in the house once again. Hello. We've got 20 of you in the live stream. We're also live on Amazon tonight. We are going to be talking about the Dell XPS 13 a little bit more on what I've been doing with this and so far what I think about it. Of course, I'm really liking it. And of course, I have the Apple MacBook Air 2020. Smart Cookie, how are you? Jeff, Jeff, good to see you. Justin Chow, hello. Okay, so we have these two here. We got 25 of you in the live stream. Uh, let me know if there's any problems with the audio or visuals, but right now it looks like it's holding okay. Otherwise, I'm sure I would have heard from you guys. Um, looks like we can have a pretty busy night tonight, <laughs> like all the people in the live stream. Um, so this is the Apple MacBook Air, as you know, the 2020. I took delivery of it on Monday, and I didn't. I was so busy with all the XPS review and all the other stuff I've been doing that I didn't. I'm still in the middle of the review. I should have that out probably tomorrow or Sunday, but um, yeah. So it's it's good, uh, but I do have my reservations on some things with it. I know I get a lot of comments that you want to see these two head to head, and I will be doing that. But to be honest with you, I don't think it's a fair review or a fair head-to-head uh, -head challenge because this really should be competing with the MacBook Pro, in my my opinion, the 13-inch MacBook Pro, not so much this. But we'll talk more about that. But I know a lot of you have been wanting to see this. Uh, hello, Hernan. 31 of you. Okay, so this is good. Uh I like the the Apple MacBook Air, and again, my review will be coming probably tomorrow or uh, Sunday at the latest because I'm right now uh, in the middle of testing it. Um, and we're also going to talk about the AMD offerings and Intel because I've been getting a lot of comments, especially in my XPS 13 video, of why people are not happy about this device just because it doesn't run the AMD Ryzen 4000 chip or what have you. Um, and so I've been getting a lot of comments on they're not going to buy this because it has an Intel chip in it. And I kind of think it's a little bit of an overreaction. Now, I don't have the Ryzen 4000 device in the studio yet. So I hear a lot of really good things about it. So we'll see. But I don't think we should bash the XPS 13. This is a fantastic uh, laptop. If you saw my review, you definitely know why I feel that way. Hey, good to see you, Mayar Sharif. Uh, how are you? Great to see you too. And let's give a shout out to David G's wife, Liana. Welcome. Uh, am I going to review the AMD? I would love to, uh, but I need to get one into the studio. I do plan on getting that, so stay tuned. 
I do plan on that for the Zephyrus G14. I've been contacted. Uh, I, I've, I've been in contact with Asus, so we'll see what happens. MacBook Pro 16, I do plan to do. I know I didn't do it when it got released, but I am upgrading for video editing purposes. I will be getting a MacBook Pro again. I had that. I had one in the past. I had a 2016 with the butterfly keyboard, but I don't like the butterfly key keyboard. Now, keyboard on this is much improved. We'll talk about that. Got 36 of you. Um, but just as a, a little housekeeping measures before we get to the meat of this tonight, um, I wanted to talk about um, what's been going on in the channel. I did release my review of the Dell XPS 13 this week. Uh, it's doing very well. I think we're close to 30,000 views. The unboxing video is at over 130,000, so it's doing really well. The, the unbox, the Live stream I did last week has gotten over 5,000 views, which is a lot for a live stream, at least for me, at least. And then, um, and then I, I released the uh, Asus ZenBook 14 with the Comet Lake processor, the ScreenPad 2.0, and it did okay. I got close to 10,000 in a couple of days, which is pretty good. Uh, the channel is about to hit 80,000 subscribers. I think we're about 24, 25, depending on how many I lose from the live stream. But we're close to a 80,000 milestone of subscribers, which is great. The last week and a half, the two weeks, I've gained about 1,500 subscribers. So it's really growing. And that's good to see, especially in this trying times that we're in right now. Uh, how are you, Jabol? Uh, G. Jabol, hi from Ottawa, Canada. Hope you're staying safe. All right, we got 40 of you in the live stream. So let's get into it right now. Um, the Dell XPS 13 2020, this is the 9300 for those that want the model number. Uh, my review unit, if you don't know, has the 16 gigabytes of RAM. The 32 gigabyte option is not available yet, but from what I understand, it will be coming soon. So for those holding out for a 32 gigabyte version, stay tuned. I'm trying to get trying to get some more information from uh, Dell. Now, what you're good, and just a synopsis for those that didn't see my videos, but I'm sure most of you did. Uh, excellent keyboard on this. It's a much improved keyboard over the XPS 13 2 in 1. Beautiful display. Uh, now, I want to tell you something about the display uh, that I didn't say in the review, but I think it's worth noting. Um, you can actually disable, obviously, the automatic brightness or adaptive brightness, which really I can't stand. I like to get my displays as bright as possible. But if you go into the um, the the Intel utility for the graphics, you can actually turn it off there. And once I did that, you could actually get it almost to 600 nits. Now, I measured 525 on average, but I've only, I, you can get close to 600 nits on this. This is one of the brightest, most crisp, sharp, full HD plus displays I've ever seen. It's absolutely stunning. Let me bump up this. Uh, I always forget to do that. Um, and so I'm loving that. Uh, the display on this is one of the big selling points. Now, this is the out. So that, that and, and one of the things you're getting with this are two Thunderbolt 3 ports. We lose one of the USB-C ports from the last generation. We lose the battery indicator light on the side. Uh, we gain a 17% uh, bigger glass touchpad. We get an edge-to-edge -edge keyboard. And we've gotten even bezels around the four uh bezels on this the four corners it's all even on this and you're getting excellent battery life uh 10 plus hours uh from normal use I, i'm thinking this is a fantastic laptop now this is about 1800 or so i think i said 1700 but a lot of people have been pointing out my review unit has 16 gigabytes of ram i only went with what dell gave me in their press materials but if you do spec it out it's going to be around 80, 1800 or so uh, well worth it, in my opinion, Core i7, 10th generation Ice Lake, and you get the Intel Iris Plus graphics, which is a boost in performance. Yeah, so uh, the battery indicator, there you can tell, I guess, from here, it's not on the bottom. I don't see anything um, as far as beneath the touchpad. That's what everybody's saying, but you know what? I don't know. Or well, maybe it is. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there's no button here or anything. Maybe this lights up. Let me plug it in to see something. Because I've been wondering this myself. So this, let me plug this in. Okay, let's move the <laughs> MacBook out of the way. Um, 
So this lights up. Okay. So this lights up, and I guess this is the battery indicator light letting you know, but I don't know if there's any way to turn it on when the screen is off. So anybody knows, let me know. But I think that's what he's talking about. But before, in the previous, in the 9380 and before, there was a button over here that lets you press it, and you'll know exactly how many uh, bars are left. Do I find the vents on the bottom of the XPS 15 being a problem? Can you use it on your lap without any issues? Yeah, I didn't find it got very hot on the bottom. I thought they did a pretty interesting job um, with the cooling on this. They put two vents on the side, but it sort of goes away. So it's not directly on your lap. So when you're using this on the lap, it didn't get extremely hot. Now, it does get a little bit warm, but it's to be expected if you're pushing it, especially on a thin and light laptop like this but I didn't find it to be uh, hot or uncomfortable. Okay, let me, uh, hold on, sorry. Um, her Dell XPS 13 lid doesn't get stretched far back. Is that limiting in real life? Um, let, I'll show you exactly how far back it goes. It goes, that's it. Now, I don't find it limiting for me personally because I think this is a good angle. Uh, if you want something that goes further back, um, get the, the two-in-one. That, of course, will go all the way back. But I don't find it limiting. Some people might. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Is the resolution difference between the Full HD on the Dell and the Retina display on the MacBook Air noticeable? Okay, we're going to show you now. And again, I'm going to do a head-to-head -head in a in a r normal video that you'll find on my channel. First, I'm going to do the review of this. Uh, let me close this for a second. Let's talk about the MacBook. Let me put that here. So this is the MacBook Air uh, 2020. And this uh, has a few key uh, improvements over the predecessor. Okay, you see the touch bar, touch ID rather. There's no touch bar on this, thank God. Uh, the keyboard... The keyboard is much improved. They went away from the butterfly keyboard. We now have uh, scissor style keys. The butterfly was terrible. I I don't know if anybody has, I'm sure a lot of you have seen it, have used it. It is was a very terrible key travel. This is so much better, a lot more key travel, a lot more um, tactile feedback. Now it's a good keyboard. I like this keyboard as well on the Dell. So I think there, it's a wash of which one's better, but they did really improve this very, very much in this uh, iteration. Now, um, the, do, do I prefer, Eric's asking the FHD versus the 4K. I, on the, okay, so on the Dell, which we'll show you right now, this is a full HD plus resolution. That's 1920 by uh, 1200. And I'm going to tell you right away, this is a much better display. And the reason I say that is, besides having touch, which this, of course, does not, um, it's just more crisp. It's more sharp. This has a higher resolution, but it doesn't make it a better display. This has more reflections on it. A true tone display, it's okay. I'm not the biggest fan of the true tone display. I usually turn it off, especially if I'm trying to do Photoshop or video editing. So I really don't, I prefer the display on this. This is much more sharp, more, the colors to me pop better. And it's also more pleasant to look at. I mean, look at the bezels the, between the two. The bezels on this is so much thinner than this. This is, looks dated to me. And I, call, call me crazy. I know the Apple fanboys will get on me in my in the comment section, but it really is um, not as pleasant looking, to be honest. And let's be honest, it's not as good as the Dell's, uh, display. And again, this is something that this Apple doesn't have, of course, is the touch display. Now, of course, Apple's going to want you to buy an, Air, an uh, iPad Pro, but we're not talking about the iPad Pro. We're talking about laptops here. And this, to me, needs a touch screen. And Apple just refuses to do it. Now, as far as battery life on the MacBook Air, uh, again, my full review is coming, but so far I'm seeing about nine and a half hours on a single charge. I'm getting 10 plus hours on the Dell for the same test. So we're looking at similar, but better, you know, comparable battery life, but a little bit better on the XPS 13. You're going to get about an hour plus on the XPS 13, which keyboard is better. Uh, they're both good. And again, I got to give kudos to Apple for getting rid of the butterfly keyboard, which was atrocious. 
and going with the more reliable scissor style keys with more key travel. So I would say they're about even. Uh, I like the both. Um, now this is a white keyboard on this color. And of course these are black keys. So this might be, be you might be able to differentiate the keys better with the, the contrast between the two. But I, I would say it's a wash at this point. When do you think the 14 inch MacBook Pro is going to be released? I think it's going to be released sometime this year. I don't know when. I don't know if the current situation, of course, has delayed things, which I imagine it has. Uh, but I do expect to see a 14 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, this is $999. So everybody knows the entry level MacBook Air. This is not the one I would recommend anyone to buy. It's a dual core machine, Core i3. But it is a $999, which is the cheapest uh, laptop you can buy from Apple right now. This starts at about $1,250 and looking at around $1,800, $1,850 for what the one I have. So it's a big price difference. And that's why I say it's not a fair comparison between these two because this really competes more directly with the 13-inch MacBook Pro. Okay, uh, let me see. Thank you. I appreciate that, Alan. Right now we have 59 of you in the live stream. Okay. Why is that? Let me just see what's going on here. Okay. All right. Well, I don't know why my, my doc is showing up, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so... No problem, Eric. Okay, so if you're going with the MacBook uh, Air, keep in mind, you're really not competing with the Dell XPS 13, and it's not a fair fight. Um, so I think that's going to be another issue. Now, this is another issue. Other reviewers have said this runs hot. I've noticed it get hotter than the Dell, believe it or not. Um, so the cooling might be an issue. Now, as I was saying, 999, I wouldn't go for that one. It does have eight gigs of RAM. It does have 256, which is good to see. Apple going away from the 128, that that was pathetic. But um, as far as the um, get the core i5, it's a it's a 10th generation quad core CPU, Ice Lake processor. That's the one I would go with. It has better graphics, although this says it has uh, Iris Plus graphics uh, in the system about this, you know. so. It shows Iris Plus graphics on this, but I think there's an even faster one, I think, on the Core i5. Now, I have all the numbers on the Core i5, and in my review, I will compare the i3 and the i5 so we can get an idea. And then, of course, I'll compare it to the XPS 13 2-in-1. Um, does the Dell 2020 come with a two-in-one. Not yet. Um, the, the latest two-in-one is the one I reviewed in late October. You can look on my channel. It's the 7390, if you need the model number. And that has the same processor as this, the 10th generation Ice Lake processor. Let me close this for a second. I have a feeling that's why this is still coming on here. Let me hide the dock. Hold on. It's really annoying me. Um... Where do I find the doc? Da, 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 da. Just bear with me, everybody. I know it, uh, if I don't find it in one minute, let me just search doc. Is this really annoying me? Here, doc settings. Um, I want to minimize it. Okay, there we go. Better. <laughs> okay, all right. How's the woven glass fi finish compared to the metal? I love it. We'll talk about it in a minute. I dislike metal board because whenever I type, my wrists are not comfortable. This is more comfortable to type on than this. Let me just back this out a little bit. Okay. Um, so if you open this, yeah, this is not as comfortable as the woven glass fiber. Uh, which is lighter. This one's a little bit lighter. The They're both pretty light. They got pretty small chargers. I don't have the Mac in front of me, but if you, and the other one's plugged in, but if you check out my videos, they're pretty much comparable in terms of size. This is a little bit heavier. I think this is two, with the touch display is 2.8 pounds. I forgot what the Apple is. It's very similar. It's under three pounds for sure. So I think it's, ne it's not, it's a neg negligible difference. You really won't notice the difference. What's up, Jack? How are you doing? Okay. Now, 
couple of things I don't like about the MacBook Air so far. And again, I like the device, but I'm not crazy about some of the decisions Apple made. Uh, they put both of the Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 3 ports on the left side. That's all the ports you get, by the way, other than the audio jack. Two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the same side. What I think Dell did was much smarter. They put one on one side and the other on the other side, so they're not bunched in the same area. And in case if you need to have uh, one on one side, another thing plugged on the other side, it makes more sense. Th this device on the MacBook Air, that's not the case. They're both located on the left side, and I'm not crazy about that. Um, let's see. Uh, MacBook Air only has two Thunderbolt 3 ports and a headphone jack. Yes, and the headphone jack is on the other side, on the right side. And as you can see, it's there. So lack of ports. Again, the Dell's not winning any awards with the ports, but I can tell you one thing. It has a micro SD card reader. Let me move my mic a little bit. Just give me a second. Um, as you can see here, micro SD card. And don't underestimate that because uh, you can't expand the storage without a dongle on the MacBook Air. You can do it on the uh, XPS 13 2020. Tech for your needs in the house. How are you? Good to see you again. 64 of you in the live stream. Yes, you can charge from both sides uh, on both devices. So you can charge on this side uh, on the Dell and on this side. And then both, well, you have no choice. You have to do it on this side because they're both located. And again, that's the problem I see with the Air uh, in the placement of those Thunderbolt 3 ports. Which one is better for data science student? It depends. Are you using Windows programs? Are you using Mac OS programs? What are you using? So uh, again, it depends on what your cam what camp you're in. Um, do you need a touch display? Because if so, then go with the, the XPS 13. If you are in the Mac OS eco ecosystem or the Apple ecosystem, you're more comfortable, go with the MacBook Air. Tech for you needs to ask a MacBook Air dongle or hub to connect more things to it. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing, right? You're going to have to get dongles with this, with the with the Air. Um, and on this one, you do get two Thunderbolt 3 ports. You lose one port from the last gen, but you do have the, you do have the micro SD card reader. So you're going to need dongles potentially for this as well, but not as, again, if you need storage expansion, this is the way to go on this one. This one is just dongle life. Uh, which one is better, carbon fiber or frost white? Now, I used to be the biggest proponent of the carbon fiber, but I'll be honest with you, I'm now having used the, the glass woven material on this, I'm in love with it. And it doesn't show any fingerprints and it stays clean. Whatever they did to this really worked. And I'm a big fan of the frost white. You know, I used to be the other way around on the platinum silver with the black carbon fiber, no longer. Uh, both are dongle life. Yes. Yeah. I, I said you, you need dongles for both, uh, Felipe, but, um, but we're in the point now these have Thunderbolt threes. And so you can get Thunderbolt three docks if you need to dock at, in your home office. Um, but again, if you need to get SD card reader, this one has one built in a micro SD card reader. This one has nothing. So just keep that in mind. Linux support on the XPS. I'm going to be doing a separate video on that. I'm looking into that right now. You can install Linux from what I understand. Uh, I know I wanted to do that on the full review. I just ran out of time. I'm doing another video on a few other things, including Linux on the XPS 13. So stay tuned. Which is the better battery life? That would be the XPS 13. This gets 10 plus hours. This gets nine and a half hours. So they're both good, but this is a little bit better. The Dell. Heat management, this is better. The Dell does a better job in my testing. This gets a little bit hot. Other reviewers have talked about this, uh, getting overheating. Again, thermal issues might be an issue. So we will see in my full review. If you had 1700, would you go for the XPS or the MacBook Air? Uh, me personally, and I'm going to be totally honest, I would go with the uh, XPS 13 uh, this particular model, actually, this would be the model I'd go for. 32, I think it would be great. I just think it'd be too expensive. Uh, 16 might be the sweet spot. Um, I like the MacBook Air. Don't get me wrong. And it raises a few issues. Do you get this or do you get the MacBook Pro 13 inch or wait for the 14 inch? And that's cu I'm curious to see what they do because that needs this keyboard. Again, the butterfly keyboard is terrible. Um, 
which of the, uh, which of them has a bigger performance? Well, between these two, it's going to be the Dell because this has a Core i7 Ice Lake. This one is the entry level. This is the Core i3, but I'm really going to be comparing it with the Core i5 with those numbers. I just wanted to see what the cheapest one can do as well, but I will give you the numbers for the Core i5, but it won't be as good as the um 7 the Core i7 on the XPS 13. Okay. Do you need long battery life? I do. I mean, I'm one of the people that is a proponent. The longer the battery life, the better. Uh, I think a lot of people feel that way. But right now, everybody's working from home, so we'll have to see. Do you do Lenovo? Can you do Lenovo's foldable, foldable tablet? Yeah. And if you watch my channel, if you follow me, you know I got a hands-on uh, look with look at it at, at CS 2020. I got invited to Leno Lenovo Suite, and I got a, about 25 minutes with it. And uh, you can check out that video. It's on my channel. Uh, I do really think that's a very interesting device, and I will be getting a review unit at some point. Again, with the situation in the world right now, I'm not sure when we'll get it, but I'm expecting to get it. Uh, <laughs> Hernan, this is the million dollar question. Is the Core i3 any good or is it a waste of money? Okay, here's my thoughts on the Core i3. It is good, okay? Uh, for an Apple product, it's pretty nice to see a 999 device. Uh, if you plan on doing multiple tabs open in Chrome, if you plan to do some pretty intensive stuff, go spend the extra $100, get the Core i5, a quad-core CPU, as opposed to the dual-core you find in the Core i3. So I would definitely, and you'd get better graphics performance on the uh, i5. So I would step up the i5 for $100 more. Now, having said that, if you only had $999 to spend, it's, yeah, it's good. And by the way, student discounts can bring it down even more. Apple's pretty good with the student pricing. Um, so I would go with the Core i5. If you can spend the extra money, it's well worth it. It will really, really give you a bigger boost in performance. At least 50, 60% is what I'm seeing. So uh, Core i3, I really can't recommend it unless you absolutely have to have a Mac product at $999. Spend the extra $100, get the Core i5. That's my message right now. Uh, also note that you can get Thunderbolt adapter in the XPS box. Uh, you do get adapter. Yeah, that's another thing that Dell gives you. And I showed you in my unboxing video, and I mentioned it in my review video. There's a USB-A to USB-C adapter. So for those that need, um, and they give that to you. At, it's in the box. So that's a nice little ad, although you are paying a lot of money for it. But they would, at least were doing something. Apple would never do something like that. They would never give you that dongle in the box. They would rather charge you the $20 the $30 that they can charge you for a dongle that probably cost them two, three dollars, to be honest. So do they overheat with normal tasks like YouTube? Not at all. Um, the i3 struggles a little bit depending on 4K video, but I didn't see anything that was a problem, to be honest. Uh, the i7, of course, it handled the 4K video on YouTube. No, no problems whatsoever, no stuttering. It worked really well. Yeah, I was talking about this earlier to somebody. Max Tech reports the MacBook A or the MacBook Air would uh, overheat with Chrome. Yeah, um, I'm seeing some really high temperatures as well with that. Um, so it, it's really something that Apple needs to work on as far as the thermals. Um, Dell thermals are working a lot better, to be honest. Um, I know I know Max did some kind of hack or something to get the the... He has a good video on that uh, where you can make some tweaks and maybe get the temperatures to run cooler. Uh, how far does the MacBook Air lid go? It goes back as far as here. Let me move this to a little bit to the side. So if we're starting from opening to close to the extends out as far as that. Uh, for the XPS 13, if you want to see how far that goes. So you can see very similar angles. So they don't go far as back like the, uh, which is my favorite, one of my favorites, the X1 Carbon from ThinkPad, the Lenovo, um, where you can lay it flat to the desk or the table, which I absolutely love. Uh, you can't do it on these devices. Uh, they both have a very similar viewing angle, and they're good. And sturdy hinges, excellent build construction on both. Both are, you know, superb builds. 
when the MacBook Air overheats, is that bad to prevent it or use it in your lap? It does get warm. Uh, but again, I have the Core i3, which is a dual core. The Core uh, the, the Core i5, from what I understand, is not, and I'm getting it into the studio tomorrow, by the way, um, is not, uh, so I'll have both. It, it's not, um, it might get a little bit warmer. Again, I don't know until I test both, but from what I've seen so far, there are heating issues on the MacBook Air. Hello, Aaron the Weird. XPS 13 or the Surface Laptop 3, Evonk 1974 wants to know. Um, I like both. <laughs> Can I have both? If I had to choose right now, um, I would go with the XPS 13, and I love the Laptop 3. I love it. You know that. And I love the keyboard. I like the look. One thing I'm not crazy about, and I mentioned that in my review, is that the screen is too reflective. Something that's not present on the XPS 13 touch display, it has a nice anti-reflective coating. You don't see, like, you could even see it here to some of you. You can see a little bit, but nothing like this. You see how the my, my hand reflects much more in the MacBook Air. Same thing, and maybe even more, on the Dell, on the Microsoft Laptop 3, the Surface Laptop 3. On the XPS 13 2020, they put an anti-glare or anti-reflective coating, and it's excellent. You know, I don't have any problems with glare or reflections like you do in the Laptop 3. And for that reason, I'm going to go with the XPS 13. Uh, again, both are excellent. Both have great touch displays. And I like the thinner bezels, by the way on this infinity edge display over the um, the laptop threes display. But again, you can't go wrong with either. If I had to choose, I'm going with the XPS 13. Which is the best webcam? Uh, I gotta tell you, and again, I don't wanna spoil the review for you guys, but I'm sure other people have shown it to you. The webcam on the, the FaceTime camera is terrible on the, um, <laughs> on the MacBook Air. And, Apple should be embarrassed with it, but we'll talk about that. Again, it's not the worst I've ever seen, but it's not good. And and I got to give the uh, same thing to Adele. Uh, you know, the fact they were able to put a, a an infrared win Windows Hello camera on the top bezel, impressive, but the camera itself was not great. And I, and I talk about that in the review. So I don't make, and I don't hide anything about that. It, it's pretty evident in there. Yes, and I like the modern look, futuristic look, more of this uh, frost white on the XPS 13 over the MacBook Air, that's for sure. Which one charges faster? I'm going to give that to the Dell. Uh, Dell charged under two hours. I'm still testing this. This charges pretty fast, but I think it was over two hours. But I'm going to give you the file numbers in the full review. So it's looking like the XPS 13 charges fast, and that makes sense. It has a, um, a higher wattage charger. It comes with a 45. And I think this comes with a 30, but I'm not sure. I'll have to double check. If anybody wants to correct me, let me know. Uh, I wish the MacBook Air used a 15-watt chip like most other Ultrabooks, but that's clearly not possible in the current chassis, which is unfortunate. You are correct, Nicholas. Um, heating is going to be an issue with this. Which one lasts longer? And if you're talking, Michael, about uh, battery life, it's the Dell XPS 13 uh, 2020. This lasts about 10 plus hours. This will last you about nine and a half hours. Down, um, which keyboard is better tech for your needs? Um, they're both good. Uh, I don't know if one is better than the other. They're very similar in terms of key travel. I'm glad, again, Mac, uh, that Apple went away from the uh, butterfly keyboard, which was terrible. Now they're going with scissor style keys, more traditional style keys. Same with the Dell, which in the two-in-one was a problem with the maglev keyboard, similar to the butterfly keyboard we found on this previous model. So between these two, I guess it's a wash. They're both very good. All right, Eric, let's see what you have to say. I have the 2019 thir XPS 13, and I'm considering upgrading to the 2020. I like the new display size, and that's a big deal. I would normally say stay with the uh, 2019 version with the 16 to 9. This has a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, and I didn't realize what a bigger big difference that would make until I actually used it on a regular basis. This has a 13.4 inch display as opposed to the 13.3. And what it also has is a uh, even bezels all around. And it makes a huge difference when you're working and you get that extra screen real estate. So uh, it is something to keep in mind, Eric, that's for sure. 
The XPS keyboard is a little different. The first letter of the print screen is not caps. Of the print screen. Um, the first letter of the print screen is not caps. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, let's see. How are the speakers? Uh, the speakers are very good on the MacBook Air. Not as good as the MacBook Pro. Uh, MacBook Pro has some excellent speakers. They're very good speakers on the Dell XPS 13. I would say these are, uh, I, I might give the Air a little nod, although these are really good. Again, they made a few changes with the design this year. They, they moved the speakers to the bottom, and they still sound great. The Air has some very good speakers too. So I would say they're not going to be that much, the one is not going to be much better than the other is what I'm trying to say. Okay, yeah, all right. So the ThinkPad X1 Carbon 8th Gen is out and... Um, from what I understand, it's the same chassis, the same exterior with updated uh, internals. We're going to go with the 10th generation processor as opposed to the 8th gen. And I don't know if Lenovo sending me one. Uh, I did speak to Lenovo and I forgot to ask them. Hopefully I will be getting one. But other than that change, there's not much difference. So I don't know if they're going to be sending them out. So I don't know, but I hopefully will. Let me take some coffee. Okay, the microphones are very good on the Dell. If you checked out my unboxing video, I gave you a, a nice example. Uh, it sounds good on the Mac, on the MacBook Air. Camera's just not good on either one, but it's really not good on the MacBook Air. You'll see in the in my review. XPS 13 or the X360 13. All right, let me bring the HP into the play into play here. So this is another one of my favorites, and you can get this. And by the way, if you're watching me on Amazon, links will be in the description below. This is the X, the HP Spectre X360 13-inch, uh, which has been released late last year um, with the gem cut design, 10th generation Ice Lake processors, and a beautiful, this is the full HD model. Now, remember, I also reviewed the one with the um, OLED display, which was fantastic 4k oled display and i gotta tell you it was it was spectacular this is a, a low powered one watt full hd display now the keyboard on this is fantastic edge to edge keyboard uh great key travel great display this comes in under a thousand dollars and that to me is a great deal so if anybody's looking for uh, a good choice where they don't want to spend the XPS 13 price and they don't want a Mac that's uh, limited in terms of thermals and other things at the 999 price point, look at this. This is a great price to value ratio. So it's very good. So if anybody asks, HP Spectre X360 holding its own here in 2020. And, and I'm sure we'll get the re refresh model but again, running the same processor as the Dell. Have you reviewed the new Asus ZenBook Flip 13? Uh, Bupe, no. I just reviewed the ZenBook 14. I'm trying to get a hold of the Flip 13. If there's a refresh model, uh, we'll try to get it from Asus. Are you going to have a comparison between the XPS 13 2020 and the Surface Pro X? Uh, probably not. And the reason being is that these are not similar devices in my book. Um, different form factors. I know it's more with the Surface Pro 7 style, uh, the Surface Pro X. Um, if I get enough demand, of course, I'll do it. But I'm right now I'm gonna I'm gonna compare the XPS 13 2020 Stanley to the HP Spectre, which is what I have here. I'm gonna compare it to the MacBook Air because people have been asking me that. Although I think the more fair comparison would be to the MacBook Pro 13. Does video calling use a lot of battery on the MacBook Air? Uh, I haven't made too many video calls with it. Uh, I don't think it does more than, it's not a high powered camera. So I don't think it would take up too much battery more than any other task. So the page up and page down in your X360, uh, page up, page down, you said in your X360 review, Ice Lake. So if you look at this, uh, some people might not. I actually don't mind it. It's a, they put all in a row here. You got home. You got the delete home page up, page up, page down, and and then one of your arrow keys for your cursors. Uh, not bad. Uh, again, the, it's just a different layout that HP went with. This is one of the best keyboards, by the way. They did a great job on it. 
I see we have 86 of you. So looks like you guys are happy with the live stream. All right. Um, next question. You hate ARM processors. I got to tell you, though, having used the Samsung G Galaxy Book S for a couple of months now, I'm impressed with what they did with that Snapdragon 8CX. I know a lot of people rag on Windows and ARM, the limitations that it has, but if you use it in the right way, in some ways it might be even better, especially if you're on the road a lot. Built-in LTE has been a boon. I love that. It's It's been great. Thank you, Blue Gear. I'm glad you like my uh, work that I'm doing. This has been a busy week on the channel. Trying to get to, let's see how many subscribers. We're, we're very close, but I usually lose a few subscribers at the live stream, so we'll see. Um, we have 79,978. I'm 22 away from 80,000. I don't know if we'll get it before the live stream is over. Probably not, uh, but it would be nice, right? Okay. So 80,000. I, I, sometimes like these numbers, I know it's not a lot in the tech YouTube world. Um, you know, we got MKB. She got mil 10 million plus. Uh, was it lose got more than that, I guess. I don't know. All right. Anyway, if you encountered problems with the MacBook Air 2020, um, I have not. Um, the Core i3, I'm getting the i5 tomorrow. Um, the Core i3 is... Um, is, it's not one I would recommend only because if you could spend that extra hundred getting going from a dual core to a quad core CPU is a world of difference. Uh, as long as we're dedicated. Thank you, Aaron. The weird. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate all the dedication that you guys have shown me over the years. I appreciate that a lot on the surface pro X. Okay, I don't know. What is your recommended way to clean these premium laptops? And again, another thing that drives me nuts is um, I have a cleaning cloth, <laughs> microfiber cleaning cloth. Um, not the best way. There are products you can buy. Uh, one of the big problems of the XPS 13, not the XPS, the Dell XPS 13. Yeah, the Dell XPS 13 from the carbon fiber, not this model, was that the carbon fiber would show fingerprints, the glass touchpad would get smudged up, and it was just a pain in the you-know-what to clean. Uh, having this woven glass fiber uh, has made a world of difference. It doesn't show any fingerprints, and it stays clean. Whatever they did, I got to give the engineers kudos, Adele, because they did a fantastic job. Yeah, I was talking about this uh, earlier. The overheating problems on the uh, MacBook Air 2020 are have been documented, and I don't know what Apple can do with the chassis that they put this in. Uh, I fix it. I believe did a tear down. It's more repairable now, but when they did tear it down, you saw it only had one fan, and the way the airflow in that, it's it might be a problem on this, but we'll see. I'm going to still do more testing. We're already 43 minutes in. Wow, it just goes so fast. We've got 89 of you. Can we get to 100? Let's see. How is the trackpad on the XPS 13 compared to the MacBook Air? Um, MacBook Air has an excellent uh, trackpad. And they always had some of the best. It's a bigger size, although the Dell has now 17% uh, bigger than last year's model. And it's very super responsive. These are precision touchpad. This is excellent. I guess this is still the best, although really made Dell's made really big strides on the touchpad. This one a little bit bigger, probably I would give the nod slightly to the MacBook Air. How are you highlighting the questions? Good question, Digital Analog Ham. I'm using uh, a service called uh, StreamYard, and you can just go to StreamYard.com. There's a free service. I actually have the paid version. It allows me to uh, stream on multiple platforms. Right now, you're watching me either on Amazon or on uh, YouTube, okay? So for those watching me on Amazon, links for all the products, of course, will be in the description below. If you're watching me on YouTube, I will put all of them. I didn't get a chance. I've been sort of a rush today. I'll get all the links below. But yeah, so I'm using it from a program or a web-based program called StreamYard, and it actually works pretty well. I'm able to use my camera, my front-facing camera, and my overhead cam. Everything seems to work well. It's a nice solution. Uh, StreamYard.com, I'm not being sponsored by them, but check it out. Maybe you might want to start a live stream. 
Yeah, you can't have the RTX 2080 on both laptops, then. The problem is the thermals would fry and it would fry these two laptops. Uh, Surface Pro X do not support 64 bit apps. And again, that's been the biggest issue, Ben, as we pointed out. But again, if you're doing Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, consuming media, you have no problem with the Windows on ARM. Something like the Surface Pro X or the Samsung Galaxy Book S. I don't code, unfortunately, and so I'm not the best person to ask that question, Ahmed, but um, you can code on these. Um, but again, I'm not the expert in that area. I really don't want to steer, steer you in the wrong direction. Uh, Evank1974 is asking, with so many people working from home now, can you do a video on budget laptops, maybe between six to 800? And that is something I'm actually planning. Very good timing, uh, Evank. 1974. Um, yeah, I'm going to be doing a more budget oriented look. I'm going to look at some other laptops I have that I haven't talked about for working from home. And that, that segues into another topic I want to talk about for just a brief moment. Um, if you've noticed on Amazon and on B&H Photo and all these places where you can want to buy a webcam, Best Buy, all the prices have gone up where webcam like the Logitech C920, which was what I guess 100 bucks or something, prior to this uh, disaster that's going on in the world, now is going for like $400 or some crazy. Uh, the demand for uh, good um, webcams has really risen due to the fact that everybody's working from home. So, so now, you know, I'm one of the few reviewers, I don't know if you've noticed, that test the webcam. I know a lot of them don't. Some of the bigger YouTubers, tech YouTubers, just gloss over it. And I think it's a very important facet of each laptop, how good is these web conferencing software, um, how these cameras are, how good are the webcams with to do Zoom, to do Skype. And I'm, I've am i been doing them for years and people are saying, well, why you waste your time on the webcam? Who cares? Well, people are caring now. And I'm going to even continue to do it as I've been doing it for years, uh, testing the webcams. And I know some people didn't like when I don't like when I do it. But again, it's a reality that we're living in right now. I love to review Razer products, Dan. Um, I've reached out to Razer numerous times and they just, I thought I had something going with them and then I don't know what happened to them. So I'm going to continue to reach out. I can't go out of pocket right now because I just can't afford to buy Razer products. It's just too expensive. Touchpad versus touchscreen. Um, good question, Dragon. Um, I like the touch screen and I don't know why Apple is so averse to, well, I know why they want to sell iPads. That's why um, they need to put a touch display or meld the two, make an iPad MacBook air hybrid, do something. They need a touch display. I, I forget about touch bar. Forget about that nonsense. Yeah. They got a nice touch pad, but we need a touch display. This has one of the best touch displays I've ever used. It's such a beautiful display and it's so, and, I don't, everybody says, well, it's overrated. No, it's not. Um, using a touch display like this on a thin and light device, portable device like this, when you're in an airplane or whether you're on the sofa surfing, there's nothing like being able to manipulate everything with your fingers and it works really well. And they need to do that on Apple. I don't know. I know why they're not doing it. They don't want to cannibalize any of their iPad cells. But the bottom line is people want these touch displays and they need to put one in the MacBook. Do you recommend the 4K of the 1080p for the XPS 13? Good question, Sai Diraj. Um, I recommend the 1080p, well, I should say full HD+. Plus. Remember, this is a 13.4-inch 1920 by 1200 display, Infinity Edge display. Uh, they do have a 4K, which would be 3840 by 2400, which would be UHD+, plus, and you don't need it. It's gorgeous. I have no doubt about it. It's going to be superb, but you're going to sacrifice battery life. And this is a, it's a gorgeous full HD plus display. You really don't need to spend the money and you don't need to give up the battery life if you go with the full HD plus display. That's just my opinion. But if you're like a video editor or using Photoshop or Lightroom and you want to have that 4K display or 4K plus, well, I would guess UHD plus, then go for it. But for the average consumer, this is fantastic. I, I, the sweet spot to me, full HD plus core i7, 16 gigs. You'll be fine. The force touchpad is so much better. You can click at the top, which is the click, which the click trackpad does not. It is a better touchpad. I don't disagree with you. Force touch is good, I guess. 
it's an excellent touchpad. I think Apple's done it once again. Um, there's no doubt about that. Does the 9300 really have 500 nits of brightness? I got mine yesterday. Oh, yes. Okay. So here's what you got to do, Norman. Go, if I got to recreate this, go into the Dell, um, the Intel graphics properties, and you're going to want to change some settings. Make sure you turn off the adaptive brightness in this display settings, and that'll definitely help. Okay. What you need to do, though, is you need to go into, let's see here. Um, I forgot how I did this. I went to the device manager, okay? And then I went into display drivers and then the Intel Iris Plus graphics. Oh, wait, I think I know what I did. Um, let me see, graphics. Here, Intel Graphics Command Center. And I'm gonna show you on the screen, Norman, so you can get the most out of your Dell. And assuming you have the same display. Now I have the touch display, not the non-touch, so I cannot speak for that. But if you go to the um, information settings here, there's a, there's a setting where it allows you to turn off the adaptive brightness, and it makes the huge difference. I forget where it is. It's here somewhere. But it's in here. Just play around in here. Uh, I don't want to take up the whole stream on it. But I did it and, it, and then I remeasured it, and I got close to actually... <laughs> I got 525 nits, and then I measured it again after the video. I got even higher. So it got even more, almost to 600. Now, keep in mind, your battery life will, will go down as well. Hopefully, that helps you, Norman. It's in the – oh, it's under the power um, tab. And then you want to turn off adaptive brightness, which is right – it's like uh, right here. You'll, you can't miss it. I have it off. Turn that off. You're going to thank me. You can thank me later. Okay, Norman? Okay. Oh, good. We have Tally Ho in the, let's get him on here. Tally Ho Tech. <laughs> uh, which webcam is the best for practicing for the fist of you? <laughs> Tally, for those that don't know, Tally Ho Tech is some of the best um, Dell XPS, best laptop channel. Check him out if you haven't done so. Um, so, you know, you want to go to him. I don't know which is the best for fist of you. <laughs> Um, excellent channel. Check him out. I'm glad you were able to check out the stream tonight. Tally ho, mate. All right. Uh, I hate the touch screen because I don't. I, I like the touch screen. I think it's got a lot of functionality. What are some of the reasons I should get the MacBook Air over the XPS? Um, all right. Well, where do we start? Touch display. Um, Thinner bezels, if you like, you're into that. I am. Uh, I like this woven glass fiber, to be honest. This metal is beautiful, but it's a little bit more harsh, sharper edges, more comfortable to type on. Um, keyboards are washed. They're both very good on these uh, updated models. Um, the processor is better in this one, but you can get a Core i7, but then it gets really expensive. You're getting in MacBook Pro territory, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, there are a whole lot of other reasons, but I guess the display would be my biggest. Um, and for good reason, the display on this is simply fantastic. Yes, Tally Ho's here. Uh, pay a little bit more. Reflections are easy to see. Where are you? Um, touch, touch is quirky in Windows. Uh, I don't find it's not touch optimized like it would be, say, on an iPad, I guess. Uh, but having touch and be able to scroll and do everything with a touch uh, rather than having to rely on a mouse or the touchpad, I actually like it. Now, the Dragonfly that you review support Microsoft Precision. Yes, it does. And um, that's something that HP has been doing. They moved away from the uh, Synaptics drivers they were using on, say, the Spectre line in years past and other platforms um they're using precision drivers and they do work well i was asking uh macbook air over the xps not xps over macbook air okay so daniel so why would somebody get the macbook air well if you want to do a uh, final cut pro if you're in the a apple ecosystem and you cannot do anything but final cut pro then there's no question although there's no gpu on this that's another issue uh, you can do 1080p video editing on this, but not the best when it comes to 4K, to be honest. Although, you'd be surprised 
how optimized Final Cut Pro is. Now, other than Final Cut Pro, why would somebody get the MacBook Air over this? Um, some people just prefer Mac OS over Windows. Now, you can run Windows with Boot Camp on this, so that might be, but it doesn't run as nice as on something like this. But MacBook Air is a good sell if you do go for the Core i5. Now, the Core i3, which is the one I have here, uh, spend the extra $100, get the quad-core CPU. I think the XPS 13 looks a lot better, to be honest. The bezels are so much thinner, more modern look with that woven car glass fiber. Uh, I'm going to get the MacBook 14 when it comes out. Yeah, I'm more interested in that one, to be honest. Um, this is a good price point, but I would like to see the 14-inch to see what that the Pro can offer. I hate the touch because a little expensive reflections are easy to see in short battery life. Well, fan, um, I would normally agree with you, but on this XPS 13, uh, it is a, it, it can get expensive, although they do start around 1250, which is not a bad price for the quality you're getting, in my opinion. Uh, reflections are not a problem on this as an anti-reflective coating. It's a lot better than the MacBook Air, to be honest. And then the short battery life, that's not the case. This actually has better battery life than this one. This gets 10 plus hours. There's a 52 watt hour battery. This is a 49.9 watt hour battery and gets shorter battery life. But this has good battery life in its own right. This is just a better. Okay, which uh, laptop do you recommend for working on applications like AutoCAD? Neither. Um, if you AutoCAD would be like the Lenovo ThinkPad P1, that workstation that I love, or the one I reviewed today. I released a video, the HP ZBook uh, 15 G6, which is a fantastic mobile workstation. That's excellent for AutoCAD, excellent for medical imaging, excellent for architects. Uh, it's it's fantastic, but it is expensive. But then again, it's the right tool for the job, in my opinion. So price will be there, you know, obviously consideration but not as much as when a consumer is looking at these products. Businesses tend to spend more because that product, that tool is what it is, will get the job done and make them more money. How's the MacBook Air? How's gaming on the MacBook Air 2020? Have you tried? I haven't gamed on it yet. That's tomorrow. I'm going to test some games on it, uh, Steam and so forth. Um, I'm not anticipating it being great on the MacBook Air, but we'll see. Uh, gaming on this can be done if you lower the settings on the XPS 13. Uh, you can play certain games, of course, with the Iris Plus graphics. So um, XPS 15 or Extreme X1. Um, I like the Extreme X1, but I want to see what Dell's coming up with in their updated uh, XPS 15 line. It's in dire need of a refresh, and we're anticipating one, so we'll see. But I do like the Extreme X1 Gen 2, as you know. Uh, besides the discount on the Mac, which would you recommend for schoolwork? Um, they're both good for schoolwork. Um, you can get a very good student discount from Apple. I, Dell, I'm not really sure about the discount. I know if you buy it from Best Buy, they do have a student pricing as well. Um, both are very good for students, especially if you're on a budget and you cannot go beyond the $9.99, then go for the MacBook Air because that's the cheapest Mac you can get right now. Uh, best two-in-one laptop for tablet, warp tablet for college. Uh, best two-in-one, I would recommend if you want something thin, light, and portable, and 13, and again, I need more information. You might want to check out the uh, XPS, no, not the, uh, you might want to check this out, the Spectre X360 13-inch or the 15-inch if you need bigger uh, screen real estate, more screen real estate. This is very good though for a student because you could take notes with the pen and it comes with a pen and the display is beautiful. Great battery life, excellent keyboard, nice gem cut design. You can't go wrong with this baby and less than a thousand dollars on sale. Again, fantastic for the student. C740, uh, $700. Um, I reviewed the C740. I love it. I think it's a great, uh, high or high mid range kind of uh, laptop right below the C940, which by the way, I have here, the C740 I have in the other room. Um, this is the yoga C940. This is the 4k version. I also have the 1080p version, which is great. Also, this has a sound bar, um, but getting back to your question, dragon, the C740 is um, a good choice for a student. That's for sure. Or anybody. This is the 4K display. This is beautiful also. And this is 
something that the others obviously because this is a convertible this will go all the way back um and again this is a very nice c940 with that champagne color that's the mica color and then you have the sound bar can you the xps 13 is the only ultra portable laptop that supports 32 gigabytes of ram um i'm not sure about the xps uh i'm not sure about the specter x360 uh, I don't think that can go up to 32. I, don't, I think it's limited to 16 for the mo the most recent model. Uh, I'm not sure about the 940 either. I don't think it does. I think 16 might be as far as you'll go. Um, so this might be the only one that can get up to 32. And again, it's not configurable yet on Dell's website, but from what I understand, it's coming. I know the press material that they sent me has it. We've been here about an hour. We got 85 of you. I think the X360 15 has two lanes on the Thunderbolt 3 port. I uh, don't remember off the top of my head, but if that is a limitation, then that might be something to keep in mind. How long does the C940 4K model last on battery? That's the problem on the uh, 4K model as opposed to the 1080p model. Um, this got about five hours, if I remember correctly, which is not great. You double the battery life on that full HD, which is a great display in its own right. A little too reflective for my taste. But I have that in the other room. But this 4K display is beautiful. Again, battery life is always going to take a hit when you go with a 4K display. We just passed the hour mark. We got 89 of you. Let's get to 100. Come on, people. All right. Kevin Shim is asking, which XPS display do you prefer? Matt, anti-glare, full HD, without touch, or XPS UHD with touch? I've used both of them. Um... I like the matte one. Don't get me wrong. It's an excellent display without the touch. It's matte. But I got to tell you, uh, Dell did a fantastic job. And they're not paying me to say this. I'm saying it because it's the truth. There's no hardly any reflections on this. This is the touch full HD plus display. And you don't see. Let me turn. Let me close this. Again, you can get higher brightness if you turn that setting off. I told you. Um, you don't see the reflection. I mean, you do, but it's hardly there. And so the coating that they're using is anti-reflective and it works beautifully. The Surface Laptop 3 has a 15 inch Intel version, has 32. Yeah, Finn, that's another good point. If you're gonna go with that 15 inch, I would recommend the Intel anyway, but if you wanna save a few bucks, you're still fine with the AMD one as well. But yes, you can get 32. Uh, is the Book S only available in the USA? I think so. I haven't heard it being released by Samsung outside the United States yet. Uh, so I don't know. I, I, I'll, I'll reach out, but Samsung's hard to get a hold of. Which is the best speakers? Uh, between which one? The MacBook Air or any of these? Because if any of these, I'm going to go with the C940. Okay? Because this has that sound bar that's fantastic. But if you're going, I would give the MacBook Air a nod or the Dell XPS 13. They're both very good. Now, the MacBook Pro might have better speakers, in my opinion. But this is a little bit of a step down, but it's still excellent. Thank you. I appreciate that. Digital analog ham. Is the C940 worth the extra money over the C740? Not necessarily. I thought the C740 was very good. It also, I believe, it, yeah, it does have pen support. Um, if you you saw my video, I'm sure, Ivan. If not, check out both the videos for the C940 and the C740. Um, which one would I was worth the extra money? The C940. The sound is better on the C940 thanks to the rotating sound bar. Um, the displays are very good on both. Uh, this has the built-in pen that the other do doesn't have. So that might be something. But the, the other one, you can use a pen. It just doesn't come with it. You have to supply your own pen. Um, I mean, it's just a matter of do you want to step it up just a little bit more in terms of the premium feel? Then, yeah, it might be worth to go to the C940. Followed your advice. I really think the brightness in – yes. I'm glad. See, I told you. I didn't know about this until after the review. So I might do a follow-up video on that, Norman. Uh, yes, the, the brightness is definitely better. It's By the way, it's still bright. But when I did the measurement, and again, I use, um, just so you know, a little behind the scenes, I use a Spider Elite 
device, and this is very accurate in terms of measuring the, the calibrated display, and we get the display analysis. So I got actually almost close to 600 on the Dell XPS 13. This display is fantastic. Okay, the XPS doesn't have a USB-A port and HDMI. That is correct. They do not. They do supply you with a, um, a Type A to Type C adapter in the box, as I showed you on the unboxing video. Um, as far as HDMI, let me see. Does the HP still have that? I think HP did away with it all. Okay, here's another thing why I like HP as far as ports are concerned. And this is the X360. They give you a USB-A port, okay? One of the few that still give you that. A US uh, 3.5 millimeter audio jack. You get your power button in the gem cut design, of course. Two Thunderbolt 3 ports, uh, the shutter switch for the uh, webcam, and the micro SD card slide. So ports are actually better than the MacBook Air, than the um, Dell XPS 13. Now, the Lenovo has all the ports on one side. And they give you a full-size uh, USB-A, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and a headphone jack. There's no, um, there's no micro SD card slot. So I think the best for ports is my Spectre X360. Best price is the Spectre X360. You get more bang for the buck. Uh, I love this laptop, and I think you can get a good deal. If you're watching me on Amazon, check it out. If you're on... Uh, YouTube, go to my reviews on these. I did the uh, full HD low watt display and the one watt low power display. And I did the one on the OLED, which was simply gorgeous, but you won't do quite as well in battery life. That is correct. The C740 doesn't have Thunderbolt 3 ports. This has two of them on the C940. Thanks for pointing that out. Uh, is the MacBook Air 2020 good for businessmen and lawyers? Uh, yeah. It's good. Um, it could run Microsoft Office. It could connect to the web. So, yeah, any lawyer can use it. Any businessman can use it. PowerPoint presentations work well. Uh, you can use Pages. You can use uh, Keynote, which is micro, which is Apple's version of uh, presentation software. Yeah, it's a good it's a good choice. Charging speed between all the devices. The fastest might be the. Um, might be the HP and the Dell. I can't remember off the top of my head. Just check out my review on how fast. It was about two hours or less. This was under two hours for sure. This comes with a 60, I believe this comes with a 65 watt fast charge adapter. Same, I think with the um, Yoga C940. This is a slower charger. This has the, uh, the, the smaller charger if I'm not mistaken. Somebody correct me, but I'll, I'll, I'll clarify that in my full review. The ThinkPad P1 third gen, that's a mobile workstation. Uh, well, yeah, I can't wait. Uh, what, I love the P2, as you know, or the P1 Gen 2, as you know. So um, I can't wait for the third gen. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Uh, MS Office really gimped on Mac, Mac OS, though, uh, which really bugs me because I practically live on Excel. Yeah, I agree. The Windows version is so much better. Uh, but you can use Google products if you like Docs and stuff. But again... It would be nice to have a better MacBook, uh, Mac OS version of, of Office. Thank you, Zuriel. I'm glad you subscribed. And those that are watching for the first time, if you're not a subscriber of mine, check out my channel. You might find things that you might like. Uh, hit the subscribe button. And for those of you, make sure you hit the like button on this video. It helps the algorithm. It sends my video out to more people. More people that see it, the more chances I'll get better units to review. And so life goes on. So here we go. Um, Tech Realm is asking, which core 10th gen Ultrabook has the best battery life reviewed? 10th uh, gen uh, is this one. Um, this low powered one watt full HD display of the HP Spectre X360 did over, I think about 12 and a half hours on my continuous web surfing test. So battery champ goes to this. This did very well, 10 and a half hours, but I would go with the Spectre X360 with the full HD one watt low powered display. 78 of you. So it's looking good. Let me see my subscriber count. We're getting close to that. 80,000 subscriber count. 
Uh, we're now at, we're 20 away, <laughs> 79, 980. I don't know if we're going to get it during the live stream. We're already at an hour and 10 minutes. But by the time I wake up tomorrow, I might have it, and which would be great. I just want to thank everybody for a moment um, now that I have everybody here. I want to thank everybody to for supporting the channel. Um, so a lot of you I know have been commenting and supporting me for years. Uh, I've been this is uh, I've been doing this four plus years now. I've, we've gone through the ups and downs, and to be able to get close to that one hundred thousand subscriber mark, I know it's just a number, but it does mean a lot. And goals I think are very important. Um, so I will let you guys know that I appreciate everything. People like Mayar, I know you've been a good supporter of the channel. I you comment and so forth. Uh, how can you get my email address? Um, it's on my page. If you go to my, you say business inquiries, it'll tell you Andrew at AMD tech reviews.com. Um, I want the button row like print screen home up and down, but I don't want the first letter of the word is caps lock. I want the button row. I'm not sure what I mean. Are you talking about which device are you talking about? So here's a print screen button on the, um, Spectre X360, and the delete is over here. I'm not sure uh, what you're trying to get at. Maybe it's me. I don't know. <laughs> oh, thank you for the um, super chat. I don't know how much that is in whatever country you're from, but I appreciate it. Any support certainly helps. Uh, any suggestion where to buy good used laptops? Hernan Rusi is asking. Uh, yeah, Swappa is a good place. I don't know if what country you're in. In the United States, we go to Swappa all the time to buy phones. You could also buy laptops now. You could buy cameras. It's a good place to buy it. Now, eBay is always dicey to me. Um, you can have a hit or miss experience. I've had both. So it might be something that you might want to consideration. What is COP as far as currency? Just I'm just out of curiosity. But thank you. I appreciate the support. Anybody wants to give a super chat, uh, go ahead. This certainly helps out the channel. So I would check out Hernan, uh, getting back to your question, I would check out uh, Swappa if you can. I would also check out um, local, you know, places where they sell used stuff. You could sometimes find good deals like flea markets. But right now, everybody's staying at home. eBay, be very careful. There's a lot of tricksters out there. The Colombian pesos, Hernan. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hope you're staying safe in Colombia. I'm a big fan of Colombia. I like Colombia. I had an ex-girlfriend who was from Colombia. It was beautiful. Uh, muy caliente. Very hot. Okay. <laughs> a great review. Like it should be supported. I appreciate that, Mayar. Um, I appreciate the kind words. Same for you, Blue Gear. Thank you for liking my channel. Uh, any insights on the HP Spectre 360, 15, 2020? I... I I know they're coming out with it. I can't say certain things, uh, Pradeep, uh, but stay tuned. That's all I can tell you, okay? Just stay tuned. We're going to be seeing something. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to get it. Uh, stay tuned. I've been talking to Asus. All right, 75 of you in the studio, on the live stream, rather. Okay, uh, Shashank Bhatt asks, Hey, Andrew, I've been following you since a long time. Thank you. I really hope you'll reach 100,000 subs soon. I hope this year for sure, hopefully. Stay safe and keep giving us valuable content. Stay safe from India. I thank you so much. You stay safe as well. Hope you and your family uh, are home and not having to go out into this dangerous time out in the world. And I appreciate that. Uh, RTX 2080 is the best. Yes, it's very powerful. Uh, Dell XPS 13 may be the best choice from display and performance. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Shush Shushovan Kundu. Um, yes, I, I think the display is the winner here. Uh, performance is good. Uh, the performance is an Ice Lake, uh, seven, 10th gen Core i7, same as the Spectre X360, same as the C940 from Lenovo. Can you tell me, is there HP Spectre Folio 2020? You know, the funny thing is, I was thinking the same thing, Moad. Uh, Mo uh, 
Moaid. I don't know. I don't want to butcher your name. I'm sorry. Um, I love that Spectre Folio. Remember, that was the leather laptop. And I did a couple of videos on that. And I was asking HP, whatever happened to that? And they never got back to me. Uh, they do have a um, the wood uh, HP NV13 wood edition, which I'm trying to get a hold of. Um, but I don't know if they're going to do a Spectre Folio 2020. I hope. I liked it. I thought it was innovative. And I thought that leather was very nice. How has COVID affected my channel? Great question, Zuriel. It has. Um, uh, some de some devices got delayed. I would have had this Dell XPS 13 sooner if it wasn't for um, what's going on. I don't want to mention. I don't want to get. Um, I probably already mentioned. So if I get demonetized, I get demonetized. No big deal. Um, the uh, Spectre. Uh, certain OEMs are now going to delay the releases of certain devices. Uh, and so, yes, it's definitely had a direct effect. The other direct effect is uh, people are losing their jobs. So they're working from home. So the logistics part of it is um, affecting how we're getting the products. And then so certainly people are buying less, although I'm noticing on Amazon people are buying more. So my affiliate links are going up. Um, but they're not buying the high ticket item prices like before. But again, time will tell to see how this all plays out. Hopefully we'll get through this. But yes, definitely being affected by the current situation. A absolutely. When do you think the MacBook Pro 14 inch will come out? I think Apple has it ready. I just think they're waiting for the right time. And especially with what's going on in the world, they're trying to weigh their options right now, hopefully sooner rather than later. I just joined from New York City. I see the stream started an hour ago. What did I miss out on? Legendary content. I hope you're okay in New York. I, I'm from New York. Um, I have a lot of family that's obviously they're at home can't go out. It's uh, been a hot spot here in the United States. Um, so you, you know, we were talking about all these ultra portables, we're talking about the Dell XPS 13 2020. We're talking about the MacBook Air 2020. Uh, I also threw in a little bit of stuff on the Yoga C940 just for comparison purposes. And then of course the HP Spectre X360, which to me is the best price to value ratio. Uh, among these, which laptops is the light is the lightweight? Uh, they're all very light. I know the HP is pretty light. This is 2.8 pounds. I forget what this, this might be a little bit more. This weighs a little bit more as a bigger display. Uh, all very similar, all under three pounds. Uh, so they're all comparable in terms of weight. Again, I did reviews. This review will be pop. It will be, um, debuting probably the next day or so. So stay tuned. I'll have all that information in the spec section. Uh, ZenBook Flip 15 4K is any advantage to get a secondary screen on the touchpad? How is about the battery life? Good question, Pokai. I just did uh, yesterday. I released the ZenBook 14 with the ScreenPad 2.0. Uh, I have it over there. I could bring it over if you want, but check out the video if you haven't done so. The ScreenPad 2.0 I thought would have more um, value than I thought than it actually does, and. It is a little gimmicky in my opinion, although I do like the fact that I could play a YouTube video while the main display has the, my working I'm doing on and so forth. So it's nice in that regard. It's also nice to be able to use it as a numeric keypad, but I don't think it's worth the hit you're taking on the battery because of that. And so I'm not really sure that's exactly what you need um, as far as that's concerned. But um, I love this. The Zen book line to me is very nice. It's a good price as well. That 14 inch, I think was $1,199. The 15 inch, you bumping up to about $1,500, I believe, which is still a great value considering you're getting a, that 4K display. I'm, I think the 4K on that one. Now I did review the uh, ZenBook Pro Duo, which I absolutely loved. Now I think that display was really something special. And then they came out with that new concept device that I saw on, I forgot the name of it, but I think it was the Zephyrus Duo, and that looks that thing looks amazing. It's futuristic for sure. Uh, stay safe, uh, legendary content. I agree. It's tough in New York. I don't know what happened in New York because here in Las Vegas, in Nevada, they were very quick to shut down the strip here. Uh, California, they shut down everything real early. So it never really caught on like it did in New York. I'm not, I understand New York is a, obviously very crowded. I'm from there. Uh, but family, I know two friends of mine, their parents, uh, 
their fathers have died, which is just sobering, uh, unbelievable. I can't believe that when I found out that their their parents died. I mean, wow, you know. And then you don't realize it that it's hitting to everybody. Okay, Norman, thank you for the super chat. Uh, Norman, I appreciate that. Uh, I'm glad that I was of help to you, and I'm glad I'm help you make your buying decision. And I appreciate the five bucks, man. It helps. You know, it's the little things, you know, and uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Not necessary, but definitely appreciative. Uh, how bulky are the two in one laptops while using in tablet mode? Does it give extra boost to your productivity? And how good are the thermals in the Spectre 13 2020? Um, the Spectre 13 2020 didn't come out. Are you talking about the one that came out late 2019, which is the most recent? Yes. So the thermals are decent on this. They're good. Um, these are very, everybody keep in mind, these are thin and light laptops. So um, having a thin and light laptop, anything like this, less than three pounds and so thin and razor sharp, uh, you're going to get thermal throttling. I, I'm, I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. Look how thin this is. The heat has to go somewhere. And if it can't dissipate fast enough or cannot escape, it's going to get hot. If it gets hot, it's going to power down and it's going to start to cycle down. And then you're going to get the thermal throttling and affects the um, the overall performance, of course. Is the MateBook 13 2020 out in the USA? Um, you know what? I reviewed the 13-inch uh, a couple of years ago when it first got announced. I, I don't know what's going on with Huawei in the United States. And the PR company that I was used to contact me and send me stuff, uh, they, um, I don't know what's going on, to be honest. I guess they're focusing outside the United States right now. That's the thinking I'm getting from that. Uh, let's see. Do you think companies will hold out a release of new products this year due to the less demands as a result of the virus? Yeah, I think some will, some won't. I think they're going to have to release some products. Um, so we'll see. Uh, I think this is still playing out. I think we're, we can't rush to, I think we can expect some delays, but I don't know enough yet because it's still too early to tell, but hopefully this will pass quickly and we'll get back to normal. Uh, I have to work. Uh, we are planning to announce a request for donation from people around the world. Thanks, Andrew. Stay safe and social distancing. Best wishes. Thank you so much, Mayar. Stay safe. And thank you. Uh, for your support of the channel. I appreciate it. And thank you for the work you do. Which one do you recommend for students? Uh, this one, the HP. If price hits all the price points for me, it hits all the major points: price, performance, uh, value, which is separate from the price, but value and um, overall build, ports, and ability to use it with a pen, perfect for the student, less than $1,000. My pick is the HP Spectre X360, if that's what you're asking. Okay, what do you think of the new Ryzen 4000 series? I am a big fan. I just haven't tested it out, but from what I hear and read, it is looking good. I think uh, Intel's got some problems to worry about here. I think AMD has uh, stepped up their game. Now we got to see what Intel does. I'm planning on hopefully getting something soon. Uh, AMD Ryzen 4000 or Intel i9? I don't know. I cannot answer that. I've only used the Intel i9. I have not used anything with a Ryzen 4000, but I will, of course, uh, determine that once I can get a laptop that's running the Ryzen 4000, so stay tuned. What's up, my friend? How are you? Good to see you, Chandrakant Patel. I'm glad you're here. So we've got 87 of you. This has been a great. Let me just check to, to quick to see if I can, how close we are to the 80. I really want to get it tonight somehow. 82. So we're 18 shy of 80,000 subscribers. And um, it means a lot to me. I, I got to say, we're getting closer to the magic 100,000. And just as an aside, uh, the 
channel on the April 1st, which was not an April Fool's joke. Um, I think it was April 1st I got it, or maybe the 2nd, I should say. I, I hit the 15 million view mark. That means my videos have been viewed 15 million times. And I can't tell you from the bottom of my heart what that means. It's an amazing feeling. I haven't seen many. Thanks, so I haven't seen my reviews. He's answering something. Um, does Dell also does provide education discounts? It looks like a sizable amount too. Dell does some great sales and does educational pricing. So check it out. I know Apple does. I know Best Buy. If you in the United States, if you buy through Best Buy, there's a if you have a student in the family or there, it's very loose when it comes to that policy. It doesn't take much to get it. Hope you get 100000 by the weekend. Oh, me too. <laughs> Benito, me too. Um, if I can get it this year, that's great. Um, I'm on target for October, but anything can change. It can slow down. It can speed up. So the, the projections are looking like October. So hopefully we'll get it this year. When I get it, I get it. Thank you, Bob Botts. Just subscribe. I appreciate it. We're one step closer to that 80000 that we're very close to and the 100000 eventually. I hope so too, uh, legendary content. Uh, 100,000 at the end of June? Listen, I'll tell you what, I did about 50, almost 2,000. For the last two weeks, I think I've gained about 2,000 plus subscribers. So that's pretty good. The way things were going, that's pretty good. What do you love about the iMac Pro and do you love it more than the HP? Uh, I, I, I'm I actually getting an iMac Pro, funny enough. I'm going to be using that for all my editing. Right now I'm editing all my content on a iMac 2017, a 5K iMac, and it needs it's getting a little bit long in the tooth. So I am moving to probably most likely the iPad Pro, iPad Pro, <laughs> we'll talk about that another time, the, uh, the uh, iMac Pro, we'll see. Thank you. I appreciate that, Benito. Where's Tally Ho? He couldn't take it. He left. <laughs> Check out his channel, people. He's got some good stuff there. He's When I first started, he was one of the channels that I looked up to as far as he's fantastic. Thank you, Danny Wong, for subscribing. I appreciate it and um, means a lot. Thank you. Uh, when will the iMac be redesigned? Um, it needs to be redesigned. Oh, by the way, that reminds me. It does need a refresh. I don't like the bezels on the iMac. Um, I have the, and I'm going to release that probably in the next few days. I got to finish it. My HP Envy 32 that I got to look at at CES 2020. It is a premium all-in-one 32-inch 4K gorgeous display. Sound is amazing with a sound bar on it from HP. I got it. It's a beast. Uh, I'm going to do a video on that very soon, but it's a definite iMac rival and it's better in a lot of ways. In a lot of ways. We'll talk more about that. Do you think you can do a video of the, when the one plus eight and eight pro come out? Because I've not tried a lot of the phones and might buy one of them. Yeah. I've, I've tried to get review units from them. Um, I've, uh, they just don't respond. I may have to go out of pocket for it, but I probably will do it. Uh, just by next week's live section, you should do the 80,000. Oh, yes. I'll have more than 80,000, hopefully. I'm hoping to get it overnight. I think we're 18. Let's oops. <laughs> let's see where we are now. Um, let's see where we are. I think this is working. We're now 11. Let's see if we can get it on the live stream. I need 11. We have 79,989. So let's see. We may get it. Um, in the next, I don't know, we already had an hour and a half. We may get it oh, during this live stream. That would be fantastic. To get 80,000 subscribers would be amazing. So if you are not subscribed, just subscribe if you can. Dave Lee or Dave 2D? Uh, I like Dave 2D when he originally was starting out. I like Dave. Look, don't get me wrong, but he has now changed and... Um, when he first started, um, I loved I looked up to him. Um, when I was first starting out, his reviews were amazing. He's now gotten to the point. I, listen, I don't criticize him. He's got a lot of success and he's fantastic in what he does, but those reviews are not reviews in my opinion. He used to do reviews. It's now he's just doing product placement. I, I don't know what to say. I mean, I like him, but 
I liked him in the old days, but that's just me. I'm going to be checking out now, but I follow you on social media and will stay posted. Thank you so much, Legendary Condes. Stay safe in New York, and um, hopefully we'll get we'll get through this. Have a good night, uh, Legendary Content. Stay safe. Our country time is 5.20, but I didn't sleep for your life. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? I appreciate that, Moeda. I, I don't want to take you away from your sleep. You could always watch it on the replay, um, but I'm glad you're able to stay up and 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 participate. This is the only time I can do it. I'm a, I'm in a business. I don't do this uh, full time. Uh, I do have a job that I go to that requires me to leave the house, unfortunately, because I'm considered a, an essential business in where I am. And so I have to be at a certain place, but, um, so I'm, I'm, I take all the precautions, wear a mask. I do everything gloves whenever I go out. Uh, but, um, I would love to do these earlier and I know it's hard to accommodate everybody, but this is the only time I can do it. But I appreciate you staying up Moid and checking it out. 5G is dangerous. In what way, Fan? Thank you. Okay. Let's see where we are. My family is rich but poor at the same time. Tell me about story of my life. Okay, let's see where we are. Uh, we <laughs> we're nine short, so I'm going to leave my phone here. We might hit it during the live stream. This would be great. Anybody who's not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification bell. This way, you'll be alerted every time I post a new video. And let's get it to the eighty thousand. We're close. We're nine shy. Let's see if we can get it before the end of this live stream. What other job do you do? Is it hard to run this channel together? Yeah, I'm in the legal field. I'll leave it at that. Um, as far as, um, uh, what is the other question? Is it hard to run the channel together? Yes. <laughs> hard to have a family, which I do have. Um, I have a wife and a son. And um, it's tough to manage all because I don't want to ignore them, but the Videos take a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of concentration, a lot of time again. Um, so, and it costs a lot of money. So, but it's well worth it. I absolutely love making these videos, love doing these live streams. So, absolutely. Do you have any videos about yourself in the channel? I try not to get, it's not about me, um, unless you, I, I might do a behind the scenes a video for members only, which is going to be starting soon. I just got to finish. That it's got approved by YouTube. I just gotta do some promotional stuff for it. But yeah, I, I maybe I'll do something about myself. Give you a little bit of Q and A. Stay tuned. What do you think about the new Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro? Um, I for three hundred. I, I think I talked about this. I think two live streams ago. Uh, to three hundred and fifty dollars for the twelve point nine inch version. And then I think 299 for the 11 inch version is highway robbery. There's no way a keyboard, I don't care what it does, is worth $350 or even $300. You can buy an iPad, right? Isn't the entry level iPad $300 or something? So why would you pay for a keyboard? Um, the thing is, I like the iPad, don't get me wrong, and I like the Magic Keyboard, and I'm sure I'll like the Magic Keyboard that floats, but at $350, I can't justify it. That's my opinion. Use a Magic Mouse? No, never. Never will use a Magic Mouse. I use the Magic, the, the touchpad, the uh, whatever you call this. Um, is it true that the hinges on the HP Spectre are not durable? That's not true at all. I think they're pretty durable. I've been using this um, for now since, what, October? And it's still sturdy, still strong. Hinges are still strong. Let's build PC sometimes too. Yeah, I would love to do stuff like that. Again, I'm so limited on time. I would love to do that, but, you know... Uh, we have to see how that goes. But yeah, I'm definitely looking to expand stuff. Does Microsoft Word come on MacBook Air? No, it doesn't. But you get pages for free from Apple. Uh, 5G is dangerous because it'll make you sick and sometimes kill you. Uh, listen, we got something out there right now that's going to kill us. Let's stay at home. So let's see. Is it true that, okay, I already talked about that. 
So we're getting close. Let's see, 74 people in the live stream. Let's see how, I just want to get to this 80,000 now. This is like my goal. With three, <laughs> with three short, three more people. Come on, we can do this. And watch, once we get it, somebody will unsubscribe. Okay, what is the best ultra book recommendation right now in 2020? And I think the thing you need to consider is price, price, performance, uh, battery, display, thermals are the key, right? I'm going to give it to the HP Spectre X360 because it hits on price more than the Dell. Display, it's a beautiful one watt low power display. So you're getting battery life. You're getting performance out of the 10th generation Ice Lake processor and all that is there. So that's for overall. Now, my my favorite is this so far, the Dell XPS 13 9300. We need one more during the live stream. We're at, we're at 79,999. This is exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, we need one more and we'll hit it on the channel during the live stream. Oh my God, the, the pressure is mounting. One more person who is not subscribed, if you're in the live stream, hit it. Hit that subscribe button. Come on, you can do it. I want to I want to share it all with you as 77 of you in the live stream. Okay. Have you ever heard about the debut date of the X1 Yoga? Not yet, but I think it's coming. And we did it. We got quite a bit. We got 80,004. I want to pre thank everybody. We hit the 80,000 miles. Thank you, uh, Dragon. You might have been the one that put us over the edge. So I thank you. We hit 80,000 subscribers. I want to thank everybody from the bottom of my heart. This is amazing. And I got tired, by the way, of seeing 70,000. So the seven, but you're already starting to unsubscribe. I got 80,002 now. So just hold steady. All right. So let's get back to the questions. I want to thank everybody. That's amazing. Thank you, Benito. We did it. Let's see if it holds. Because usually what happens when you pass a milestone, somebody, uh, Moad might have been, I don't know who is the one who got it, but I appreciate that, Moad. Thank you, Dark Obsidian. That makes a big, excellent. Thank you, Bupe. I appreciate it. Can you, uh, where is it? Can you bring the ZBook 15G5? I have the G6 and I have it here. Uh, hold on, let me get it. Okay, I'm here. So I released this video today, and all right, we're at 80,003. So I released this video today of this. This is the uh, HP, HP ZBook G5. I'm sorry, HP, I always get this. HP ZBook 15 G6. This is the sixth generation of this, and I got to tell you, I love it. You know, it's doing okay on the channel. Let's see what we're at, we're at as far as views. Uh, it got 2.6 thousand views. Not bad. I mean, it's okay. Again, not going to be the most popular laptop, so I'm not expecting big numbers like I got on the XPS 13. But I got to say, it's mu much better. Uh, this is a great if you want an upgradable laptop. If you want to have um, uh, something that you can easily access, plenty of storage options, plenty of RAM options. Uh, great build, very powerful. It's got the RTX. Uh, T3000 processor, the Xeon processor in this. Uh, it's got a GPU, rather, the RT, what is it? The RTX T3000 Quadro. This is the Xeon processor in this. This thing is pretty amazing. This is great for video editing. This is great for an architect to do CAD work. Oh, man, it's pretty good. Uh, I saw the ZBook review today. It's an HP Spectre on steroids. It's You're not kidding, William. This thing is a beast. Like It's pretty light considering what it's packing under the hood. This is 64 gigabytes of RAM. You can put 128 gigabytes in this thing. Okay. I do like Chromebooks, but every time I do a Chromebook, I never get more than like 3,000 views. So I don't know what it is, me or the Chromebook. I don't know, but I love Chromebooks. So I'm glad we got to that 80,000. Let's just see what we have now. Yeah, we're at 80,004 now. 80,004. Nice. What is that Apple laptop near you? Uh, we started when we fir first began. This is the MacBook Air 2020 just released by Apple. Um, I'm going to be doing my review. Expect it in the next day or so. Uh, so we'll see. 
By the way, thank you, Tech Realm. I appreciate that. Pradeep, I'm I'm so happy that we're able to do this with you guys. I was able to hit that 80,000 subscriber. And again, we're going to be keep going forward. I got um, a lot of stuff on the way. Now, 90 is going to be the next level up. And then once we hit 90, it's a stretch run to 100, of course. So we'll see. I appreciate that, Gabriel. Uh, really means a lot to me, especially the people that have been here since the beginning. Uh, Dave Lee punching keyboard like this, D2D. Yes. And Pradeep, I appreciate that. All you guys, I appreciate it. Got to hit the bed. I have certification coming up tomorrow. Can rise on 80,000. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Hernan Rusi. And thank you for that super chat. I really appreciate it. And we're hitting, we're hitting about an uh, hour and 40 minutes. And I think we're going to be calling it a night. Thank you, by the way, Norman. I appreciate that. Oh, you hit four other accounts. I appreciate that. Uh, you don't have to do that. I don't want to. I don't want to spam you with all my new videos and stuff. Uh, but I appreciate that. Uh, Nicholas, I admittedly never tried a Chromebook, but I just feel like it's just not a good value. A lot of people feel that way. I think, and I mean, they send me, and I got, and I, I have one ready to go. The the video's done. It was sent to me by Asus, and I should release it. I know it's not going to get a lot of views, but I got to commit. I have a commitment. So I'll do it. Can I make a comparison video of the 13 2 and one and the Yoga C940? I don't have the 13 2 and one anymore. I had to give it back to Dell. Uh, but I did do a showdown between all of them about a couple of months ago. It's on my channel. Got about 30,000 views where I talk about all, th all the major 2 and ones released end of last year, earlier this year. So check it out if you haven't done so. William, I appreciate it. Thank you, and take care, my friend. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much, Tom McDonald. It means a lot. Safari is better than Chrome. I, uh, I don't know. I think Chrome is 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 bloated at this point, but we're so used to Chrome and its functionality that, you know. I uh, believe, thank you so much. Uh, we talked about that. So I think we're at the point where I'm going to, so we got to start calling it a night here. Which keyboard and touchpad were you most comfortable with? Uh, Dark Obsidian, I um, I think the best touchpad goes to the MacBook Air. The uh, best keyboard, either the MacBook Air is very good. But I think, to be honest with you, is this one. The HP Spectre X360 to me had the best keyboard. It has the most key travel out of all the ultra portables. It has the best tactile feedback. It's just the nicely spread out, really nice keyboard on this. So that, that would be my favorite. Does Mac OS's optimizations make it better experience than Windows? Uh, in some ways it does. I know I edit, of course, most of my videos on Final Cut Pro. And, I, and even on Final Cut Pro on a Core i3, believe it or not, did pretty well. We'll talk more about that in the full review. Now, this is the 999 entry level MacBook Air 2020. Uh, I will be having a review of that with the, or I'll be comparing it with the Core i5 that's coming tomorrow. So I will have the numbers for you for both. Don't worry. Were you the 80,000? I appreciate that. We'll see where we are now. 80,005. All right, so I think we're at an hour and 42 minutes. We still have 75 of you here. Um, Tally Ho made a video about the XPS 15, a MacBook Pro 16 killer. I know about that. I have it saved for later. I was actually going to watch it after the live stream. If those of you check it out, Tally Ho, tech, excellent when it comes to XPS, anything XPS uh, 13 and 15. All right, so um, let's see. Does the Yoga Sina keyboard flex? Let's take a look. Not much flex, really solid build. And again, I, I keep these, these are loaner units. They're not owned by me. I do have to send these back at some point, but these brands have been very gracious to let me keep them to do further testing to make these kinds of comparisons. And I do appreciate that. Okay. Uh, please advise MacBook Air 2020 16 or 8 for i5 with $200 difference or at least four to five years use. If you can go do, if you can do 16, always go with the 16. Uh, if you can, it would, it would be, it'd give you more use. It'll be more future proof. So if you can afford that $200, so that's a key. Again, if you're a student, make sure you get the discount. Eight or 16 for student. I, if go for the most RAM you can. 
Dark Obsidian. If you can go for the 16, go for the 16. If price is a consideration, eight will be fine for now, but I would be more comfortable with 16. You got it. No problem, Subham. All right, people, we're at an hour and 45 minutes, almost there. And I think I'm going to call it a night because I have a lot of testing to do. I got to do my MacBook Air review. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Zuriel. Everybody who's participating in the live stream, thank you for being here uh, for the 80,000 subscriber milestone. We hit it. And I'm so glad we would do it. We did it on the live stream. That, made, that meant a lot to me. You don't know how much that meant. Um, stay safe, Dark Obsidian, and have a good night. I'm looking at a wonderful NT virus. What is your opinion? What? I don't know what that is, Moata. NT virus? Antivirus. It's good. Uh, I don't like um, antivirus. I don't like uh, McAfee or any of the other crap. Um, it's probably garbage, but we'll see. All right, people. Tech Realm, good night. Thank you. I'm going to call it a night. It was another great live stream. I think we had almost close to 100 again. I think we had 91 or 92 at one point. Uh, we did get 5,000 views last week on the live stream. Let's see what we can do this week with the replays and everything. Uh, thank you for the 80,000 subscribers, all of you out there. I appreciate it, and I can't wait to hit the 100,000, hopefully sooner rather than later. I have new videos coming. got the MacBook Air 2020 video coming the next day or so, so stay tuned for that. I'm going to have a head-to-head -head with the XPS 13. Check out all the new videos I released this week, uh, including the HP ZBook 15G6, the Asus ZenBook 14, and all the others that I did. And I want to sign off at this point, everybody. Uh, yes, we'll talk more about that next week, but I want to sign off at this point. Remember, stay safe, stay indoors. Don't go out unless you uh, don't go out. Just stay at home. That's all I can say. Uh, let's stay safe and hopefully we'll get through this. Everybody, I'll see you in the next video. I got a lot of videos coming up and until the next video, this is Andrew signing off. Have a good night and stay safe. Have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye.